Good morning, campers. Welcome to Radio Camp Half Blood. I am your host, Zach. And I'm B. So, welcome to the first episode, episode zero, episode one point negative five. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Lion King, one and a half. Oh, yeah. How'd you know? That's actually the, that's the side story of how B and Zach actually met. And we were just in the background the entire time of a different podcast. Yeah, exactly. So welcome to our Percy Jackson read-along podcast. We've both been living on the procrastination, so yeah. uh, you know, we finally built that raft and we've sailed to new seas. Yeah, I think I still live in the procrastination, actually. But when I have to do something with somebody else and like their productivity depends on me, then I feel the need to actually do something. <laughs> That's a good motivating factor, is if you're going to ruin someone else's life <laughs> by being lazy. It's like one of my favorite jokes is the ones like, when I die, I want the last people I did a group project with to like lower me into the ground. That's like a very relatable nerd child experience to be really the entire backbone of a group project so percy jackson y'all that's what we're talking about a good old series that's near and dear to my heart b has never i don't think she's read it in this life or another dimension maybe in another dimension i've read a chapter for this podcast and that is all i have done well, we'll probably read more than one chapter. What do you know about Percy Jackson? Okay, off the top of my head, this is what I know about Percy Jackson. Ancient Greek stuff, mythology, it's a YA book. There was a bad movie or two, I think. Logan Lerman was in it. He was a cute kid. What else do I know about it? I feel like that's it. I really don't know much about Percy Jackson at all. I know that there's still somewhat of an active fandom around it. I know a lot of people have opinions about ships and who belongs with what, and there's still a lot of fan art and all that jazz. I vaguely see being in like the general internet why a circle of people who are too old to be reading books for children. Like watching Shrek in the B-movie? <laughs> Those are a different kind of people. That's my foundation of knowledge, which is a very flimsy foundation. But yeah, I'm kind of like the token dumb person in this podcast. You're my test subject. There's a difference. It's like you're the blind study or the double blind study. Maybe I should just close my eyes while I do this podcast. Have you watched Gilmore Guys at all? No, I don't. It's a podcast like about the Gilmore Girls. And it basically, it starts off with Kevin T. Porter... And Demi Adigewebe are like the two co-hosts. And Kevin, like, is a big Gilmore Guys fan or Gilmore Girls fan. And Demi, like, knew nothing going into it. He was like, sure, I'll do a podcast with you. And then they just kind of watch the show and talk about it. And it's just very funny because Demi just has no sentimentality <laughs> about the show because he didn't like watch it a million times. And it's funny to go into something like a podcast about like a specific media thing and if you don't have like sentimentality or like nostalgia for it i feel like you have like a different perspective going in so if if it's terrible i'll tell you <laughs> basically uh yeah and we'll keep going through it until one of us dies oh wait <laughs> one of us dies this is till death do us part type of podcast or whatever happens first whether we finish all of the percy jackson extended universe content or one of us dies that that sounds like a good motto for any any podcast. So for me, it's a little different. I've grown up with Percy Jackson in a sense of how, ironically, while I was reading Series of Unfortunate Events in Harry Potter, it was Percy Jackson was always in the wayside. And then when I finished those series, like for some reason, like Rick Riordan just writes too much, if that makes any sense. Like his series just keeps going forever. Yeah, that they just he just writes a book like a week and they're like 500 plus pages. Okay, so how many books are in the Percy Jackson like original books just like the the main series or whatever so the initial series what we'll be reading is percy jackson and the olympians there's only five books but there's only like four supplemental material books okay and then there's not that's not kind of like weird rick riordan writing fan fiction so what do you mean by him writing fan fiction like did he like he just writes short stories and they're pretty much very fan fiction-y. In his own universe? So like is he writing like more supplemental stories based in the same universe as the Percy Jackson universe sort of? I would say yes, but they're crossovers with other of his series in the most weird like fan fiction-esque writing possible. Yeah, okay, I see what you're getting at. I think that's that's the best way to put it. And I love the man for it. I mean, he wrote these books because his son suffered from ADHD and dyslexia, something that I also suffer from. So it's a really interesting spin on the series and how it's just like, yeah, dyslexia and ADHD is actually superpowers and stuff. Yeah, that, that definitely um, struck me as like, okay, you're, you're hitting this theme early, like when I, I read the first chapter. 
it was very much like, hey, he has dyslexia, he has ADHD, let's talk about this one character who's disabled, this other character who's disabled in a different way. Like, you could tell that there's certainly, like, a, a thesis going on about disabled characters. I guess for everyone that knows, B is also, like, a literature major. Yeah, which, you know, makes me so smart and capable, right? <laughs> My background is in technical theater, so I guess, like, it's like, oh, yes, Rick Riordan did a good job with that lighting schematic. Yeah, I get. Well, I mean, in some ways, it's like he, he frames a scene a certain way, so. Ironically, there actually is a Percy Jackson musical. There is? Yeah, there is. It was on Off-Broadway. Oh, okay. Well, I, I imagine it was Off-Broadway, because I, I would have probably heard about it if it was on Broadway. <laughs> It, it was off Broadway. It was only it was like there for like a blink of an eye, and then it was gone. Yeah, poof. Was it good? I'm gonna say it wasn't. I've heard wavering opinions about it. Eventually, we'll get to it. I haven't heard the soundtrack or anything. So, B, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is B. I am 24 years old. I really like children's literature. I like studied it in college. My thesis was about Roald Dahl and how. He was basically a real messed up guy. <laughs> that was, I mean, the, the thesis statement wasn't quite that, but it was kind of that. He preferred spending more time in his little garden house than with actual children. I mean, well, no, he liked his kids. Don't get me started on Roald Dahl. You, like, just trust me on this. Or I'll... Hi, welcome to the Roald Dahl podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's It will be here for a very long time. Yeah, that's my experience with a lot of studying children's literature, kind of doing a lot of close reading about it. I took a class in children's literature. I wrote a paper and, like, PowerPoint presentation about Harry Potter and was a guest on a Harry Potter podcast, despite the fact that I have not read the entire series, which is a really weird thing about my life. And I co-host Unfortunate Associates with my friend Tyler, which is about Lemony Snicket and all of the stuff that he's made. You know, Unfortunate Events, All the Wrong Questions, the new Netflix series, all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of my experience. And yeah, that's actually kind of how we met. If I'm not mistaken, that's kind of like what somewhat what sent you on the podcasting path a little kinda. bit. Kinda. It was just kind of like it was a nice nudge. I mean, you and you and Meg sort of met via that way, if I remember correctly. Yeah, no, that's actually kind of... So for people, I guess like that's a good segue in for me. Hi, I'm Zach, and I'm 22 years old. I like long walks on the moon. You believe in the moon? I, yeah, I do believe in the moon. It's kind of a weird holographic image, but, you know, someone's got to believe in it. Yeah. Uh, I actually, I also host a podcast. It's called Nightmare on Fear Street, an R.L. Stein podcast. So me and my friend Meg, we just talk all about goosebumps and Fear Street and every other spooky story by one Robert Lawrence Stein. Is that his? I didn't even know that was his name. I guess that's like a, that's what I would assume RL would stand for. I guess those are normal names. But for me, I always got into Percy Jackson just because like most weird kids, I grew up in a time in the early 2000s where the mummy was still popular. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh was still popular. And I really, 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 really liked Greek mythology as a kid and dinosaurs. So this was kind of like the perfect mix of for me also kid humor i love kid humor what would you define as kid humor i would just you know something that's very lighthearted and you know isn't really that serious or like uh not menacing i think that's the best word to put it is it's just like mischievous fun yeah i guess i guess i could see that i i even had the sense just reading the first chapter of, of percy jackson was like i i did f feel a lot of overlap with rl stein like the feel of goosebumps books how like this first person perspective of a kid and he kind of is making jokes the way a kid would make jokes or making observations the way like witty observations yeah yeah the observations are are the way a kid would make an observation i mean it's perfect because rick riordan actually was an elementary school middle school teacher for like 15 20 years before he actually started writing books i feel like that comes across in a lot of ways also because it's <laughs> he immediately is like see this teacher this teacher character that i uh, introduced to you he's a really cool guy very cool just like me i'm cool so the plan of this podcast actually is going to be we're going to read a chapter a week and we're going to go from there. We're going to talk about all the high points and low points of the series, talk about, you know, the mythology, favorite parts, parts we didn't care for, and overall just, you know, the journey beats the destination type of feel of this podcast. Yeah, and I'm completely going in blind at this point, so 
We'll see how I feel. What What are your predictions of this series? My predictions? Our, our mission statement and like what do you think you're going to get out of it? Or like what What do you think the overall theme of this book might, might be? Because you have gotten a chance to read the first page. There's definitely like that vibe that a lot of children's books have where it's like, this kid is special in a way and you too could be special. And maybe deep down inside of you, the thing that makes you weird is actually the thing that makes you cool and important and being different isn't necessarily bad like that kind of it has that vibe to it a little bit i mean i feel like a lot of children's books have that where it's like here's this very uncommonly precocious young kid who has like this ability and that makes them kind of ostracized but it actually is like a strength that they have in some way this is gonna be the deepest cut ever but that reminds me of a terrible movie i once watched what movie it's called i watched it because of a review show but it's called Thunderpants. Thunderpants? It's about this kid that can never stop farting, and he goes to the moon. What? I feel like you're making this up. <laughs> no, look it up. Look it up, B. You know who's in it? Uh, the guy that plays Ron in Harry Potter. Rupert. Rupert Grint, yeah. Grint, yeah, he's in it. He's the scientist that makes the rocket. What the heck? What am I looking at? <laughs> it's a movie. Wow, Rupert Grint must be really happy that most people do not remember this. I remember it. Yeah, well, you're just like a a living memory, aren't you? Just there to archive all of the most embarrassing media. I mean, that's what I have my PhD in. Embarrassing media? Yeah, I got it online. I'm also... Are you also an ordained minister? Yeah, I was gonna say. (laughs) For the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Yeah. All right, so my idea of what the theme of these books are, am I at all close? Or are you not gonna tell me because it's a spoiler? I can well I think it'd be adorable to have it like we'll play it at this part of of the first book and then afterwards at the end we'll do like a video like a see if you were right or wrong. Okay. There's definitely like a lot of serious Harry Potter vibes happening in the first book, at least in the first chapter. That's definitely a sense that I got. So you're telling me Percy Jackson was perfectly normal. Thank you very much. I feel like this was super typical of like books around that time, but it was just like he may seem like a normal kid, but really there's a secret magic thing about him and he will find it out. And like, I don't know, I feel like I'm I'm already jumping into the book, which we're probably going to do in the first episode, but it has like that very similar feeling to it where it's like, oh, well, he now he has like this miserable life that he doesn't want to have. And he feels very weird because of it. But actually, he has the secret power that is inside of him all along. Like, you know what I mean? That's definitely a, a serious Harry Potter vibe happening. I mean, that's even in unfortunate events to a certain extent. It's like... We can easily bring this up later on, but it's like this weird time, I would say like 1997 to about, let's say the first Hunger Games, like before, you know, dystopian got mm-hmm. big. Yeah, that's true. And now thankfully it's dead. Actually, maybe even Twilight when vampires were big. We can, like, <laughs> when that vampires weird... were big, when they were so enormous. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they're like Attack on Titan. The vampire kaijus roamed the earth. Oh, this sounds like a movie. Our movie? <laughs> let's go. Oh my god, we need a gigantic mirror to like Use the sun to destroy these vampires because they're too big. The ocean is a gigantic mirror. B, that means that we could use the moon as a gigantic mirror. Oh my god. Wait, the moon? Yeah, the moon. The moon's not like... I mean, it does reflect light, but it, it's not like a mirror. It reflects sunlight, doesn't it? Y- okay. It, was there a point to all this? Uh, that weird period between 1997 when Harry Potter came out to about Twilight was you had the very similar set of books, which were kids that have terrible lives and something magical or, you know, unfortunate happens <laughs> to them, and they go on a journey. I just summed up about, like, 3,000 books for kids. We have, like, this weird period of time where books are very similar to each other because everyone wants that big old trend of the Harry Potter money. Yeah. I just think of, like, the big executive smoking the big cigar, and he's just like, make us another book like Harry Potter, see? Yeah, it's so funny. I really do feel like every book back then felt a little bit like Harry Potter. <laughs> we can also look at, like, the model of movie to books, where it was, like, series of unfortunate events, Cirque du Freak, and, like, they, they wanted to, like, use their first three books. What was that called? Um, The Something Apprentice, The Magician's Apprentice? Magician's Apprentice. Yeah. Aragon. Yeah, they were just, like, really hung up on this idea that we were like, we're going to make these YA books, and they're about kids just like you who are magic in some way, and then we'll make, like, 15,000 movies about it and merchandise it and make a theme park about it. And then the first movie bombs, and then they're just like, well, good try, guys. Yeah, that happened so much. Ironically, Disney is in production of the Artemis Fowl movie. It's actually rolling right now. 
and it took them like 80 yeah, years. Yeah, that's kind of weird because wasn't that a while ago? Well, originally it was set to be in this period of time, but they just let, they literally had a director and everything was set up and they just said, no, we're not going to do it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like things always get stuck in production hell when it comes to things like this, where they're trying to get, like, the rights to the books and all of it. I don't you know. You gotta do it quickly. I think the prime example of how it doesn't work like that is if you do a book series like His Dark Materials. Unfortunately, Perry, Percy Jackson also suffers from this, and where it's just like, we're gonna make this super quick, super cheap, and not be, you know, respectful of the source material. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you really think about it, I mean, even the Harry Potter books really aren't. From what I understand, again, I've already admitted that I haven't read all the books, but, like, the Harry Potter movies aren't, like, that faithful to the books, really. And they ruin a lot of, like, very important things in some ways that people still to this day talk about. Like, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? (laughs) Or whatever. Dumbledore said calmly. Dumbledore said calmly, yeah. Even I know that. Like, it's such, like, a, you know, a cultural meme that even I know that, and I didn't read the books. So B, where can they find you? You can find me on Tumblr at twinpoetry.tumblr.com and you can find me on Twitter at B Kelly Gorman. Um I just recently actually started using Twitter regularly, semi regularly. I have a lot of strong opinions about things, so if you wanna hear about that, go to my Twitter. So if you want to find me on Twitter, you can find me at Suda41. So you, all you do is you attach a bird and you put the at and it'll send the messages right towards me. If you want to reach us by Telegram, I'll, uh, you just go to your nearest Telegram office and request our line and they'll give it to you. Yeah, you'll find it. Definitely. You'll definitely find your nearest Telegram office, I'm sure. It's right next to the chemist <laughs> and, you know, the mortician. We still have morticians, Zach. That's, still, that's not an old timey job. People still die. Wait, that's a thing people do now? Yeah. Wow, we really have gone into the future. Death is a constant. We're not in a post-death world yet. Yet. Well, I'm Zach. I'm B. Bye. See ya.